So group two metals, that's uh, AQA specification 2.2, the alkali earth metals, paper one for the A-level chemistry specification. Uh, alkali earth metals then are beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, and radium. And we have the electron configurations for the first three here. And as you remember at GCSE, we form two plus ions of all these as they're in group two. So we lose the outermost electrons. That's the 2s2 for beryllium, the 3s2 for the magnesium, and the 4s2 for the calcium. If we look at this example for beryllium, then we're losing the outer two electrons to form the beryllium 2 plus ion. That's the 2s electrons are disappearing. So in this case, Be makes Be2 plus plus two electrons. All of these elements go on to form two plus ions. When we look at the atomic radius, then the atomic radius increases down the group. And we can see that with the little graphics appearing along the bottom of the graph now. And this happens because we have more electrons. More electrons lead to more shells, and more shells give us a big atomic radius. This, of course, links directly into the first ionization energies. And as we go down the group of the first ionization energies, they decrease, starting with beryllium at 900 kilojoules per mole and decreasing down towards barium at 503 kilojoules per mole. This happens mostly because there's a bigger atomic radius and this leads to an increased distance between the outer electrons and the nucleus. So less energy is needed to overcome the attraction between them. Look at melting point. As you go down the group, the melting point decreases. This is in general because the atomic radius increases. So now the delocalized electron in the metallic bond is further from the nucleus. So the forces of attraction are weaker and less energy is needed to overcome them and melt the metal. There is much debate to why magnesium doesn't fit the trend with some theories suggesting it is linked to the way the metal ions pack together when bonded. When we consider the elements reacting with water, we'll look at magnesium as our example. So magnesium here reacts with water to form magnesium hydroxide and hydrogen. We're interested in the first five elements, taking note that beryllium doesn't readily react with water to form beryllium hydroxide. Magnesium is a slow reaction, calcium steady, strontium speeds up fairly quick, and barium is a rapid reaction. This can all be linked back to ionization energies. The higher the ionization energy, the less likely or the slower the reaction is to take place. If we look at the example of magnesium here on this Maxwell Boltzmann plot, we can see that the very small proportion of molecules will have the correct amount of energy to react to form magnesium hydroxide. Whereas if we take calcium, which has a lower ionization energy, we can see that there's now a greater portion of molecules able to react to form calcium hydroxide. This is why the rate of reaction is much quicker with calcium compare that with magnesium. When we consider the solubility of compounds, magnesium hydroxide dissolves to form magnesium 2 plus ions and hydroxide ions. The process of dissolving is something is where we separate the ionic compound and dissociate it into its relevant ions. When we draw these out, it's really important that we remember the state symbols to show that we started off with a solid and we ended it with two aqueous ions. The solubility of an ionic compound, like the compounds form a group 2 elements, depends on the negative ion of the compound. So in this case, we've got magnesium hydroxide being one of the least soluble, whereas magnesium sulfate being one of the most soluble. Running all the way down to barium hydroxide being one of the most soluble and barium sulfate being one of the least soluble. The way to remember this is remember to that barium sulfate is the least soluble and forms a white precipitate in water, whereas the others do the opposite. So the hydroxides go the opposite way. So if you remember that barium is the least soluble, then remember that barium hydroxide is the most soluble. This insolubility of barium sulfate is useful when we test for sulfate ions. If we react barium chloride with the sulfate ions, we form the, we form the insoluble precipitate of barium sulfate. First of all, we must use acidified barium chloride. This acid removes any other ions that could be present, and we form the insoluble barium sulfate. It's useful to be able to remember some soluble sulfates, and this one we can remember is sulfuric acid, forms sulfate ions, and hydrogen ions. One of the examples given to us to learn is the extraction of titanium. Titanium oxide is first converted into titanium chloride, which is then reacted with magnesium. In this process, magnesium displaces the titanium from the chlorine, and it's an example of a reduction reaction. There are several other examples that we need to know, and one of them is barium sulfate being used for barium meals, which allow us to x-ray the soft tissue areas such as the stomach and the intestines. Sulfur dioxide is also removed with a reaction of calcium carbonates. So calcium carbonates and calcium oxides are used to remove sulfur dioxide 
from industrial pollution, such as that from factories. And there are other uses of group twos, and what two of them are the use in medicine, where we often use as an indigestion remedy, and in agriculture for neutralizing soil to help with crop production. Thanks for watching this video on group two metals. If you like, subscribe and comment with questions below.